<sighs> what have I got for you today? Well, in a break from building this Land Rover, I'm using it as a, a workbench. So, I've had a six metre beam up at home. I'm a bit of a casual user though. It was big, it was ungainly, it was cheap and it was starting to fall apart. So, I have invested in an RSGB stroke Moonraker maybe. Mono beam dual four and six metre Moxon stroke Yagi. Um, it's not an unboxing video, but this is basically what's in the box. And I've only just opened it. I've taken the liberty of snipping the end of the instructions off so we can find out what's involved. And the instructions say I have to go and get this QR code. So let's print your own manual. Right, back in a minute. Scanned a QR code on my phone, it opened up a website, which then gave me a file, which I then emailed to myself, opened up my PC, printed it off. 13 pages of colour documenting, describing what the antenna looks like, and how to build it. Now, I believe the advantage with this antenna, I ordered it quite some time ago, and then I had to get them to delay the dispatch of it because I was going on holiday is that um, you only need one feeder which is quite useful because I don't think I've got much and I've still got my feeder heading up to my old uh, six metre uh, beam then so it utilises the open sleeve feed method where there's no physical connection to the driven element on the 70 megahertz section and the coupling is based on element proximity and that length allows the 70 megahertz energy to couple to the 6 metre driven element with minimal loss. Um, it was developed by N6BT and DG2UT. So looking forward to simplicity. <laughs> the second unique feature of this is it's a Moxon on the 6 metre band developed by G6XN. It basically reduces the Yagi size by 30%. Um, no traps or shortening techniques that reduce bandwidth, so I should get full bandwidth. And to be fair, the beam I had up there had pretty narrow bandwidth anyway. I could only really use it at the bottom end, so the sort of data and SSB end of the band at a push certainly wouldn't work on FM, on six metres anyway. So, looking forward to getting something up that's a bit more discreet, which might mean that in the future I'll put up a, maybe a two metre beam above it. So I've got a checklist here, and then I've got colour photographs at great expense on my printer of how to assemble it, so let's get going. All the tools are included, which is quite cool, so the couple of spanners here, and also three hex keys. Excellent. And I should also say, all the little bags that I've just torn open are labelled with what's inside them. The only other thing I've found so far is a couple of bags of stainless steel fixings and um, a really nice, well put together section of feeder with a SO239 and that's what I'm looking for, my mast clamps and plate because they go to the boom and that's the length of the boom so it is really a compact antenna compared to the old uh, six meter thing which i think was about three meters long <laughs> this is the plate assembled so these two clamps are to take the mast or stub mast and these two are to take the boom and it's helpfully marked even though i've got it upside down on here and on here where the actual boom of the antenna needs to go it's quite a snug fit so See, I have my blue marks lined up there and there. We seem to have three different uh, diameters here. So we've got 16mm for the central section, 12mm for the intermediate sections, and we've got 8mm for the end sections. And some of them are curved to help make the mocks on shape. Then we've also got eight of those clamps. So this is the thickest in the central section. You can see here, it's got, some, it's got an insulator in it. It's also got a cable tie holding it together because it will come apart if I remove the cable tie. 
and these will be the side sections of the Moxham because they've also got the insulator in them with the required gap which makes it work as a Moxham. Okay, in order to help me work this out, you see the diagram here is colour coded as are the parts, so I've just laid them out on the ground so we can see that's pretty much going to be the entire size of the antenna. So what you have here is you have a thicker piece in the centre in each case and then you have a thinner piece that comes out each end and they have all got holes in them so we can bolt them. And then we somehow attach them to the actual beam. Somehow. So we're going to start with A, which is the front. And I'm going to mount this section using the blocks and it goes below the boom with the screw heads at the top. And then that's repeated all the way down. And the hardware bags are helpfully divided. So we've got big bolts for A and D section in a bag and then the B and C section in a separate bag. So that's been pretty well thought out, this thing. So that's my A section, which is front of the boom. I put the block on like so. It's quite a nice tight fit. Line up between the, the marks. And then my element goes on the bottom. And I'm going to use a stainless washer and an eye lock. Using my own 10mm spanner here because I do prefer a ring spanner. One thing to point out here is these central thicker tubes, they've got a larger hole on one side and a smaller hole on the other side. And it's not clear in the instructions until you possibly started assembling this, but you definitely need to have the larger hole on the top. And I think the idea is when you start bolting everything together, the bolt head uh, recesses in that slightly to give a, a stronger mechanical and electrical joint. That's me at the stage now that I've got three of the four elements on. They're just loosely attached to the boom because I need to make sure they're all in the same plane later on. For the last one, I just cut the cable tie at the last minute because I don't want this to fall apart. And again, remembering that the larger holes go to the top. So I'll get the clamps on, get that one tightened up and then we'll get it leveled up. Well, that's the four inner lengths of tube attached to the main beam. What I want to do now is to make sure that they are all sitting in the same plane because that will A, look nicer and B, make sure the antenna works a little bit better. And I also want to make sure they're at right angles, at perpendicular to this mast plate. Although that can be adjusted later on if I need to. So a quick eyeball and that's looking pretty good. You have to bear in mind here that the narrower diameter tubes aren't quite touching the wood because the thicker ones are holding it up in the air slightly. So it's a bit of eyeballing in the middle and at each end. It all looks pretty good to me, so we can now carefully nip these up in balance because we don't want to pull one side of the clamp tighter than the other. I have resorted to using my own tools. There's nothing wrong with the tools in the kit. It's just a ring spanner and a, a decent hex wrench. It's a bit more comfortable to use. I've turned the entire thing upside down here to do the two interior ones because it's easier to use the hex key from above. Again, just gently balancing the tightening of this. Now that that's done, I can attach the extension pieces, which are narrower, and I've got smaller hardware for that, helpfully labelled as well. Section B. The bolt head is almost fully recessed into the, the, the inner tube, so it makes for a good mechanical fit, even without the knot being tightened. The only thing here really is the bolts seem to be a, a little bit on the long side. So once I've got it up and running, I 
might do some gentle trimming. There is a bag that's got spare nuts and bolts in it, which is a good idea because there's at least going to be a chance that I drop one or two of these tiny ones. Right, with that all done, it's time to put the curved sections on each end. So I've got a D at this end, an A at that end, and these sections are also helpfully labelled A and D. So put that in there, that in there. Oops. <laughs> and that in there. Now we just need to line up the holes. Again, making sure the large hole has the bolt head on it. I've got slightly larger, I'm going to say they're M6, but they might be something different. But they're slightly larger bolts and nuts. To drop through there, and then we've got smaller ones again to drop through the end. We'll get this done, flip it round, do the other side. Well, that's the main construction done. This antenna is quite compact for six and four meters. That's only 67 centimeters. And if I put it this way, 2.3 meters. Now we have to take this pigtail, which has got ring terminals on it, and we attach it to the insulated, so the, the section with the gap in it, which is section D. That just bolts onto there. And that's that done. There's no issue with polarity. It can go either way. This is symmetry. Well, that's that up now. It probably took me about an hour and a half to put it together and that's with faffing around filming at the same time and um, probably half a day up there because I also have a flower pot 70 centimetres and 2 metres vertical up there and I was using the old 6 metre beam wiring for that so I had to run some extra coax just used RG213 because that's what I had a reel of so we now have 4 metres and 6 metres horizontal on the beam there and we've got 2 metres and 70 sims vertical on the flower pot antenna. Now, there are three guys there, but I haven't guided it. It's a lot smaller than the antenna I had up previously, which was a four element, um, six metre beam. And this thing isn't going to catch half as much wind. So I have put the guys in place, but I've not attached them yet. Um, you can see it's only a slender um, aluminium pole I've got and uh, the rotator isn't in a cage, but um, it's within its spec for having um, a, a small beam and a vertical mounted directly. It's an old rotator, it's a Yesu 450A, I think, rotator. So there we go, that's it. Do a quick SWR test next and uh, see if we can get this thing up and running. <laughs>